Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Thibaut Schaeffer. Uh, I'm an engineer at Provenance, so we're a software company. Maybe some of you heard of us already. We're based in London, the UK. And um, basically, to sum it up, um, the kind of the vision behind Provenance is that every great product should come with Provenance. And what that means is um, towards trustworthy information and accessible information about the origin and the journey and the impact of that uh, product. And um, basically the way that we deliver on this vision is that we provide a platform for businesses to be more transparent and share data across the supply chain and as well as with consumers. Um, so that's both um, an access for businesses to share but also um, a consumer app that uh, consumer can access to learn more about the supply chain and the great products that are being made. Um, so one aspect of this platform uh, has to do with storytelling because we believe that um, just disclosing how you make your products and, and the craft that's put into them is already a, a, a good going the right direction in terms of transparency. Um, but obviously what I'm going to be um, presenting today is more of a, the, the verifiable aspects of what we what the platform allows. Um, so we almost everything we do uh, at, at Provenance around that is uh, linked to the con to the concept of verifiable claim. Um, so I'm sure many of you are familiar with the the uh, the concept of an identity framework. Um, so there's been a few presentations at DEF CON already on that, and there are many initiatives going on. The, the concept that um, individuals could um, control their identity, and once they control their identity, make claims about themselves, and then have those claims uh, being verified by third parties or different verification methods. So for example, you could want to prove that you are um, over a certain age to access a particular service, and then you can have that verified by, let's say, a bank or a, or a peer kind of peer-to-peer -peer, uh, verification method. Um, the important point here uh, is that uh, a claim and a verification are two different things, and that um, in, in, in what we do, we try to keep the, the verification method as generic as possible so that um, people can integrate their own verification um, methods with the system. Um, and as you can see, what we're trying to do is taking this concept of verifiable claims uh, on individuals and bring that to the supply chain. I mean, to businesses and their products. Um, so first, let, let's let's look at businesses. What what type of claims could a business uh, could a business um, make? So one example that you could have is that as a business, you want to claim uh, that you're independent or that you're family-owned. And in this case, um, the way to verify that could be, for example, to link to your business registration um, that's exposed by the government, especially in the UK. Uh, there's Companies House that exposes this information. And that can act as a verification that you are, for example, not owned by another uh, bigger company. Um, you could have uh, other verification methods that could be linked, uh, that could be based on uh, consumers vetting for the businesses that they know um, in the same way, in the same kind of way that uh, TripAdvisor or Yelp um, functions. Of course, not all verification methods are equal and they provide different levels of trust um, and different levels of confidence on the veracity of the claim. Um, another type of claim that, um, that's, that's really common in supply chains is that of certification. Um, and in this uh, field, what we, what we did is working with the SOA Association, uh, which is the, the first, which is the biggest um, organic certifier in the UK, and working with them to bring their certification to the digital age. Um, so what, what, what does that mean? What's, um, I think we need a, a bit of context around what uh, a certification process looks like today for a sustainability uh, certification. So basically, as a business, if you want to be certified or organic, you're going to apply for a certification, um, obviously um, pay a fee, which can be quite expensive sometimes for, for small businesses. Um, then you're going to be audited by um, an independent uh, aud auditor. 
And if, go if all goes well, uh, you're going to be awarded a certification. What that means in terms of data is that it's just another record um, in the Soul Association database that keeps track of all certifications. And the way, as a business, you're going to be able to prove that is through a PDF that is sent to you. Uh, it's basically a, a certificate uh, of uh, or organic. So when you're going to be transacting with your business partners and you need to prove to them that you're certifi certified organic, you end up moving back and forth PDFs uh, in the supply chain. Um, from the point of view of the consumer, uh, the interaction that the consumer would have with a sustainability um, certification most of the time is either through just a logo on pack um, or it's going to be a static JPEG on a, on a website, for example. Um, so that's where we saw some opportunities to make that better and make it more interactive and, and, and interoperable. So what we did is connecting uh, the Soul Association certification database uh, to the Ethereum blockchain so that directly on the Ethereum blockchain you could check the status of any certification for any licensee uh, of the Soul Association, um, creating a, a kind of a digital version of that certification. Um, the outcome of this uh, project was that we created uh, material um, both for uh, point of sale, so in the form of connected labels that you that consumers can um, can scan either w by NFC or um, in QR codes, and we're very excited that NFC uh, is now being supported by um, by, I by the, the new version of iOS. Um, so that uh, consumers can uh, access directly this, to this information at, at the point of sale. And um, when it comes to digital space, um, we created embeds that um, uh, brands that were certified organic can um, integrate in their um, online store so that consumers, again, can access and verify the, the status of the certification. On top of that, the fact that um, we provided those tools to kind of augment uh, the certification um, allowed to raise awareness on what the certification actually means and what it stands for. Um, because we believe that just, just, a, just a logo on pack is not enough to convey um, what the audit process was and, and what actually the compliance look li looks like. Um, so moving from businesses, uh, what we're trying to do is also to um, have verifiable claims on products. Um, so when, when you think about a product, one verifiable claim that you could have is, for example, that it's free of a particular allergen. And a way to verify that could be either by normal audits, but also increasingly, and, and, and it's getting cheaper, uh, through things like DNA testing that we're also uh, looking at. But in this context, um, we, we saw that a very useful tool um, to prove claims about products was that of a tracking system along the supply chain. That's why that's we, we, we developed a way to um, track assets along the supply chain and tested that in, in, uh, in different pilots. So maybe someone in the room saw our, our piece on um, tuna supply chain. Uh, we basically um, studied tuna supply, uh, sustainable tuna supply chain over in Indonesia. And uh, basically, the setup was that um, there, there's a, there was um, a certification over in Indonesia um, according to um, sustainability practices that was certifying sp specific fishermen that could, um, that, like, that could produce uh, tuna that was certified. Um, so that was going great, but the, the problem with this was that uh, when looking at the supply chain, there, were, there was way more fish being sold at the end of supply chain with the certification than uh, there was certifications being issued uh, at the start. So basically, what we were trying to solve with, uh, in, in this particular project was the double spending of, of sustainability certification claims uh, on tuna. So what we built uh, for that was an interface for fishermen to register their catch um, via a, a batch of tuna using SMS services. Um, because in the environment we were operating in, uh, there was even no smartphone uh, to, to, to use, so it had to, to go through uh, SMS. Um, those catches would be linked to the certification that the fishermen uh, had been awarded before. 
and then they were able to uh, transfer ownership of, this, um, of, of these batches down the supply chain. And at each step, uh, a transfer would be a handshake between the uh, sender and, and the receiver, agreeing on uh, the details about the fish. So that can be the size of the batch, can be the certification itself, and so on. Um, Another um, project that we, that we did uh, in supply chains was uh, with Co-op, which is the, the fifth biggest supermarket chain over in the UK. Um, and for that, we extended our, um, our, our system, our tracking system, to support more features, so, such as supporting different uh, units using IPFS, metadata on, on, on the assets, more data on the assets, uh, as well as um, batching, splitting of batches, transformation from one asset to another to, have, to, to allow for more flexibility in supply chains. Um, so what we did with co-op is, um, and what is interesting in comparison with the, the previous um, example, is that we were focusing on uh, claims of proof of origin. So we were trying to prove that um, some products that were sold by co-op were actually made in the UK. So that was the, that was the claim we were, we were going for. And for that, we went in co-op supply chain, and, and, and um, obviously it was a more, it had some degree of digitization. So compared to the previous one where it was just normal phones, uh, they have ERPs, they have systems in supply chain. So uh, kind of the challenge and the learnings that we had through this experience is how to integrate with those, um, with those systems. And um, the result of that was, um, was that we created uh, an, an interface for consumers to access the, the journey of uh, those products. So in this case, it was about flowers, but we also um, considered other uh, products. And we integrated that into the co-op consumer app so that a uh, consumer can directly um, discover this uh, and explore the, the, the journey of, of the products that were being sold. Um, so the next, the next question that we asked was how, how we can um, incentivize good behavior uh, in this system, because I'm sure most of you recognize that it's, it's not a completely um, uh, trustless system and, and, and there can be breaches and, 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 and honest players. And what we recognize is that um, linking uh, this infrastructure for trust with the incentives of supply chain, especially financial incentives, uh, could be a way um, to, to, to incentivize good behavior. So kind of the MVP version of that uh, that we developed um, recently was in the frame of um, a collaboration that we did with a Dutch NGO called Fairfield. Um, so in this case, we were focusing on um, coconut supply chains in Indonesia, so again, Indonesia. Um, and the claim that we were trying to prove was the fair payment uh, to the farmer at the first uh, stage uh, of, the ch of the chain. So uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the concept of uh, fair trade, but in this case, we're trying to do it in a, a completely real-time way and prove um, on, on, on chain. So the way it happened is that we provided, again, an interface through SMS services because, again, uh, people didn't have access to smartphones where we were operating, and uh, we were enabling farmers to register the coconuts that they had harvested in, and, uh, as, as a batch. And then some of the handshakes in the supply chain uh, needed a proof of payment to actually happen. Um, and the way that uh, happened in practice is that uh, whenever the next actor in the chain, so that was uh, the trader that came just after the farmer that harvested, uh, requested ownership of a particular asset, the um, the farmer uh, would get an SMS asking them if they got a particular amount that, was, that they were supposed to, to have got because it's supposed to be um, uh, basically uh, an exchange. And um, depending on the answer that uh, the, um, the farmer would provide to this question, uh, the transfer would complete or uh, be rejected. Um, so in terms of the amount that was in this message, the, the amount was um, determined by uh, Fair Food, which, which was this NGO, based on uh, um, a standard of living income. So it depended on, on, on um, different parameters, including the, the size of the batch of coconuts, obviously. Um, 
And what was quite interesting in this case uh, is that we were trying to, to see if we could have some impact on the supply chain itself. And actually among uh, the, the, the set of farmers that, that we uh, considered, um, a, a few of them actually um, answered no to the, to the question from the SMS. And when we, when we investigated, uh, it, it appeared that some of the farmers were actually only be being paid uh, a small deposit on their, on, on their harvest. Um, and actually, the fact that the system was in place and, and that uh, the, the transfer couldn't be completed uh, led to the, the actual payment uh, to, be, to, to be made in, in, in full. Uh, so it was, it was a first sign that we, we can have an impact on how supply chains uh, operate. Um, so obviously that's, that's still um, kind of an, uh, a, first, a first iteration on how we could um, connect this set of um, claims to, um, to, to incentives and supply chains. Um, and what we are starting to also look at now as, as a next iteration of that is how we can connect um, our system with trade finance and, and insurance so that um, as a business um, any transparency that any, any transparency and, and claims that you make that make your product more transparent should be rewarded in terms of better access to capital or cheaper access to insurance um, and so on. So we're going to be um, starting some projects on that and we'll sure have some announcement, an announcement to, to make on, on that soon. Um, so yeah, that was that, that was pretty much uh, what we've going what what, what we've been doing uh, in, in in the past month, and um, yeah, please reach out to me. Thank you very much for your attention.